This is the Illinois Nutrient Loss Reduction Strategy Podcast, Episode 57, Fall Leaves, Clean Streams, How Leaf Management Impacts Water Quality. I'm Illinois Extension's Todd Gleason. Coming up, we'll discuss how fall leaf management has a direct impact on water quality in your backyard, the stormwater systems for your subdivision, and across the nation. We're joined by Ileana Brown. She's a water quality and stormwater specialist with the University of Illinois Extension, located on the Urbana-Champaign campus of the U of I. Ileana, thank you for being with us. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? I'm a water quality and stormwater specialist with Illinois Extension and Illinois Indiana Sea Grant. I work for Extension Assistant Dean Dr. Sheba Carr, who is Program Leader for Natural Resources, Environment, and Energy, and I focus on the urban impacts to Illinois lakes and rivers. Now, I used to lead Extension's role in the nutrient loss reduction strategy, and I have shifted my focus, but continue working with the team supporting the urban stormwater sector. So how is it, for instance, because we're in this fall time frame, that fall leaves impact nutrient loss? Uh, it's a great question. Leaves are a significant source of phosphorus from urban stormwater. There was a multi-year USGS study in Wisconsin that found that nearly 60% of the annual phosphorus from urban systems can come from fall leaves. We might not have really thought about that as a source, but it is a significant source. When we think about it, in the forest, tree leaves release valuable nutrients that enrich the soil, creating a cycle of nutrition that sustains the trees from which they fell. However, in urban systems, we interrupt this cycle with our street storm drains that take water directly to lakes and rivers without treatment. And so what would have been nourishing the soil gets into the water instead where it doesn't belong, causing local water quality issues. Let's talk a little bit about uh, leaf management, but sustainable leaf management to begin with. Uh, and we'll get back to that word sustainable in this. How does sustainable leaf management impact water quality? Keeping leaves out of the street allows us to utilize the leaves nutrients in ways that work to our advantage. The USGS study found that timely removal of leaf litter can reduce phosphorus concentrations in stormwater by more than 80%. The study also stated that nutrient concentrations in urban stormwater are a function of how clean the streets are prior to precipitation. Therefore, municipalities should aim to run street sweepers in a way that maximizes street cleanliness before rain events, while of course balancing the energy costs. So how is it that a homeowner might manage their fall leaves? In some places, it's custom for homeowners to put leaves in the street. Don't do that. Um, some people say to remove all the leaves, but when we do that, we're missing out on providing overwintering pollinator habitat. So what I do at my own place is to remove leaves from my front yard and, and I, I get my wheelbarrow and I take them to my backyard compost pile. Now in my, my backyard, where it's unlikely for leaves to get into storm drains, I do leave them to benefit the insects. I also have a lot of shade trees back there, and my um, turf grass really doesn't stand a chance, so it, it, it works out in, in my backyard. Now, one caveat, if I had young landscape plants, I, I'd give some thought as to whether the leaves would smother them, so I'd be really careful with that. I think the bottom line is that it's okay to have different zones on our yards where we do different leaf management. We just want to think intentionally about it so we can be as sustainable as possible. And finally, what are some other practices that homeowners might think about using to reduce nutrient loss? I am so glad you asked that question, Todd. Homeowners can look for ways to reduce the amount of stormwater runoff, shutting off their properties by using sustainable lawn care, reducing hard surfaces, which isn't always easy to do, and then lastly, like capturing the water to use it where it lands. On that last point, rain gardens, and I know you're really surprised, Todd, that I was going to probably talk <laughs> about rain gardens a little bit. But rain gardens are a great way of doing that. Uh, some resources for doing these things are uh, Illinois Indiana Sea Grants Lawn to Lake program has some really great resources on sustain sustainable lawn care. Of course, the, the Red Oak Rain Garden, a project that I'm involved with, has a website, redoakraingarden.org. 
And then there's also uh, some videos I did a few years ago called Stormwater at Home, and you could see those at go.illinois.edu slash stormwaterhome. What is a rain garden? A rain garden is a shallow basin that's used to capture stormwater runoff, such as what would come off a house roof. Now, they usually include native plants and, and sometimes have soil amendments to ensure that, and this is important, to ensure that the water soaks in within two days so they doesn't become a mosquito issue. The, the rain gardens, kind of the, the grand concept of them is that they mimic the ecological function of a natural landscape, helping to mitigate flooding and improve water quality. We're kind of, you know, bringing back in little pieces, we're, we're bringing back what was originally here. They can be beautiful, enhancing an ex existing landscape. If you want to learn more about them, Extension does have a training program called Rainscaping, and you can look in your county unit to see if that's going to be offered. Ileana Brown is Water Quality and Stormwater Specialist for University of Illinois Extension. Chris Inroth is a horticulturalist with Extension. He joins us now. Hi, Chris. Thanks for taking some time with us. Tell me how your job interacts with water quality. A lot of what I do helps to give homeowners or commercial farmers that grow fruits and vegetables best practices uh, in terms of recommended rates of maybe fertilizers or pesticides or how to manage um, their landscapes or their farms or their clients' landscapes in order to minimize the inputs that we need to introduce into our landscapes and to kind of maximize the benefit, uh, both kind of when it comes to time, when it comes to money, and the enjoyment of uh, dealing with the environment around us. So put that in context for me, if you could, with the urban environment, which is part of the Illinois Nutrient Loss Reduction Strategy. So one way that I uh, play a role with uh, kind of Reducing the amount of nutrients that's lost in an urban setting is we focus on that urban canopy. Uh, and that urban canopy deals a lot uh, with uh, trees, tree management, working with local arborists and municipalities on how we can better manage uh, our, our urban trees and how we can make sure that we have a diverse canopy that maybe is uh, more resilient to invasive species and insects like emerald ash borer uh, and then when we have a good urban canopy, that helps to intercept some of the uh, that rainfall, that stormwater coming down. It acts as this giant umbrella over our cities, which uh, instead of rain falling directly on the ground, it, it filters through the canopies of that tree and slows it down and allows our stormwater infrastructure a bit more time uh, to, to handle some of that water. And, and it reduces some of those more, um, you know, flash flood or those flashy events as we call them. And slow water carries less uh, things like sediment and nutrients. And so it's less likely to move stuff off of a, a home lawn or a property. Have you thought very much about what a homeowner might do in this case, especially as it's related to the management of leaves in the fall? I'd say one of the big things to consider when managing your your fall leaves on your site is to avoid moving those leaves off of your property. The idea here is to manage those leaves within your yard, within your landscape. Uh, we do see on many occasions where folks might just blow or uh, you know rake leaves out into the road, and that becomes then somebody else's problem. The issue with this is that we're introducing a lot of organic material into our stormwater system, which feeds into our lakes, streams, and rivers. And this additional organic matter, it is full of nutrients. Uh, leaves do have quite a bit of nutrients. You know, they have nitrogen. They do have a lot of phosphorus too, which is a, a primary water pollutant. And that, that addition, you know, that addition of leaf matter, organic matter, can cause nutrient imbalances in our surface water. It also, you know, we see more research showing that uh, waterways that have more organic material like mowed grass uh, clippings and leaf clippings, uh, if these waterways that have more of that organic debris suspended in that water, actually a increased uh, a, a kind of a, that creates an increased uh, area for mosquito breeding. 
Uh, it's just more desirable. It's more, uh, you know, it's a better spa space for uh, mosquito larva to breed in water with more organic material. The main thing I think homeowners uh, need to do in managing their leaves is, is avoid pushing those leaves out into a street where then they'll be washed away into the stormwater system uh, and then create all the types of problems downstream. Is there anything else you think a homeowner might consider or should probably consider as it's related to managing the leaves in their yard? Fall leaves in the home landscape, on a farm, uh, whether or a commercial landscape can be utilized on site. Those leaves contain, uh, not only do they contain a lot of nutrients, they contain uh, energy, they contain carbohydrates, they, they feed soil microorganisms, so they can be utilized on site. Probably one of the most effective ways is to shred the leaves up and throw them in the compost pile and turning that comp that, those leaves into compost then for the following season. We can also utilize leaves just as uh, in our lawns. And so if you have a mulching mower blade, you can run those leaves over, shred them up, and those that shredded leaves, they will sift down onto that soil surface and help to feed your lawn over the long term. We can also utilize leaves as a mulch. Uh, so you could shred the leaves up, uh, and shredded leaves do create a very nice mulch. Uh, and myself, I have kind of this woodland garden bed on the back side of my, my property, and I utilize a lot of our fall leaves within that garden bed because it has kind of a woodland theme, and it really does uh, work out fairly well. It's also important to, to know that there's a lot of beneficial insects, whether it's pollinators or predators, that utilize fall leaves as cover for the winter time. So it's their shelter. And so if you do have a space in your yard, you know, we do recommend, uh, you know, if there's, if the leaves aren't going to blow off, uh, you know, into somebody else's yard or into the roadway, utilize a space of your yard where maybe you can rake or push some of those leaves into an area. Again, they could just, it could be a mulch for a garden bed. Uh, and then that space can then be a, a great habitat for overwintering insects. Uh, it's also a great space come springtime for birds to begin gathering nesting materials and protein for their, uh, for their nestlings. And so um, leaves can be utilized on site. They can be used in many different ways. Um, it, it's just uh, making sure that we uh, don't push those leaves out into a roadway or into a ditch which then wash away and then become someone else's problem. Chris Enroth is with the University of Illinois Extension. So is Ileana Brown. Both of them joined us for this episode 57 of the Illinois Nutrient Loss Reduction Podcast, Fall Leaves, Clean Streams. The program was produced in conjunction with Illinois Extension Watershed Outreach Associates, Rachel Curry and Nicole Haberback. I'm University of Illinois Extension's Todd Gleason.